Good evening, everyone. How are you all doing? So today I have come up with unit nine. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Now you must be wondering why suddenly I've come up with unit nine. We were doing unit three. We were doing unit eleven. Why all of a sudden unit nine? Because uh, we get a lot of questions uh, from the students as to which book to study for unit nine, how to study for unit nine, uh, how to recall all those information for unit nine. You know. A lot of queries comes up regarding Unit Nine, and Unit Nine is one of the topic which uh, hardly uh, just say uh, fifty percent of the students attempt because obviously uh, the main units being Unit One, Unit Two, Unit Three, Four, Five, uh, Six, Eight, Ten, Eleven, Thirteen. Those being the uh, most uh, important units, Unit Nine it goes unhi unhighlighted. But yet, Unit Nine can be scoring. Now you must be wondering that if Unit Nine is scoring, then we should give some extra time for Unit Nine. No, not at all. Not required at all. Okay, because Unit Nine. First and foremost, you don't have any particular book. Okay, you will not get all the information in one single book, right? Because it is comprising of information from the plant. It's, it has got information from the animal. It has got information which is related to ecology as well. Okay, so a lot of books you need. But yes, of course, Biotechnica has got a separate Unit Nine book where all of these topics has been combined together. So those who already have the Biotechnica uh, book series, you will get Unit Nine separately over there as well. You can just study it from there. However, for those who don't have it, there's no point of searching for books for Unit Nine. Okay, whatever books you have, whatever informations you have, you have to study it from there, and you have to study it in a strategical way. Okay in a way that you will be able to recollect, you will be able to recall. So today, as I discuss again some 10, 11 questions from Unit 9, you will see how we, I am going to help you in recollection or I'm going to help you in connecting. And as we go, I will tell you how to study Unit 9 in between all the topics, you know, all the other topics that you have, the important topics. Right. So let's start with the question answer and then we can get into the strategy making. OK, we'll do two things together today. So first question. Which one of the following mammalian species is distributed in evergreen forest? So you see, this is a question which is coming from your conservation distribution. OK. Now, if you see unit nine, the last two topics like conservation and all, that is something connected to your unit 10 as well. Okay. Uh, unit 10, unit nine, the last topic is connected. So this is a topic we can say from unit nine also, unit 10 also, because it's common. So they are just asking for species distribution. Now for these kinds of uh, questions, okay. When you're studying the biogeographical region, of uh, India from uh, which is a part of your unit 10 okay it is mentioned in unit 10 over there when you're studying the different forests the different biogeographical uh, regions which are mentioned get some important names for each of these biological uh, regions okay the different uh, forests that you have the tundra region the uh, the evergreen forest and all those, okay? Get the names from there. And it will be very helpful if you can have some pictures. 
all right now obviously for one particular region like for evergreen forest there can be numbers n number of animals and birds and their okay present but which are important like how to understand which are important then check their uh, conservation status okay some common examples will be coming up to you either in the books or if you are learning from the internet common examples will come at least just learn you know just keep those common examples in mind so if you can have a picture like this okay it'll be easier for you to recollect so this is a picture of nilgai this is a picture of your black buck cheetah obviously is extinct from india reintroduction of cheetah is uh people are trying to reintroduce cheetah but cheetah is extinct so if i look into this option straight away i will rule out cheetah from here okay straight away i will rule out cheetah from here because obviously cheetah is no longer present in india okay and then we have the lion tailed macaw now obviously if you keep a picture like this with you it will be easier for you to recollect and from the picture also you know you will get the idea like obviously you can understand that meal guy uh, black buck they are not residing in the forest right they are mostly in the grassy plains and all but what about the lion tailed macaw from the picture itself you can understand their habitat they are in a forest right so here the correct option will be lion tailed macaw understood so see it becomes easier like this way let's go to the next question find grizzled uh, sorry the grizzled giant squirrel ratufa macrora naturally occurs in now these kinds of animals they are very significant animals okay the giant squirrel the flying squirrel these are very significant animals so it comes as your a uh, general knowledge also where will you find them so when you get across these significant animals no keep a note of it like where you get them all right the distribution so where do you think you will find them where you think you will find them So the options are northeast india and burma west western himalayas southern india and uh, sri lanka andamans and nicobar islands well actually you see the this particular uh, genus of squirrel this is uh, mainly found in the highlands of the central and yuva province of sri lanka and in some patches of the uh, riparian forest along the kaveri river and in the hills of your karnataka tamil nadu kerala okay and the southern states of india so if i look into that uh, information then obviously my option 3 is the right one okay southern india please ignore this uh, spelling this typing error this is india okay the print has come out like that way so the correct answer for this is your southern india all right okay good try everyone good try now going to the next question which one of the following characteristic is not correct for bryophytes so again see this is unit 9 this is from your plant right so you have to study the general characteristics of your algae fungi bryophytes pteridophytes gymnosperm and angiosperms okay this six you have to study because this is your plant classification you have now along with the important characteristics don't go into the very details of it okay anatomical uh, characteristics and all is not required the important features by which you can you know make out these uh, different phylums okay the, the different uh, 
uh, phalanx that that is what is important for you all right and uh, go into the classification of it okay the families under each of these uh, division okay with some examples now when you're studying that example now keep a picture of that example all right to understand what is the structure what is the structure over there the characteristics present structure of the plant body so in that case it will be helpful to you again so the correct answer for this is option 4 okay water is conducted by hydroids in all bryophytes now this is your bryophytes basically uh, <coughs> please excuse me so uh, basically you see these bryo uh, this hydroid no this is found in your uh, some mosses okay mostly it is uh, present in the mosses and uh, it is a type of your vascular uh, cells that occurs in uh, these mosses and some members of the polytrichian family so basically here this innermost cells of the stem all right uh, they become non living okay they are usually long colorless and thin walled with small diameters okay uh, but they don't have any living protoplast so they are basically non living and they help in the water conduction all right the surrounding cells this uh, leptoids, these are the living ones with the protoplast. All right. Now, next question. So, which one of the following species of birds is known to migrate across Himalayas? Again, a question from your unit 9 where the migratory birds uh, are given. Indian subcontinent under that topic you have it so which one of the following species of birds is known to migrate across Himalayas now see just when you read this saurus crane red vented bulbul Jacobian cuckoo bar headed goose you might not be able to relate these names to the birds right so again what comes handy a picture so the first one is your Saras screen. Next one is your Bulbul. Then you have the Jacobian Kapu. Okay. And then you have the bar headed goose. Now these pictures are becoming familiar to you. Yeah. Are you now getting familiar with the pictures? Have you seen this picture somewhere? So now see coming to the answer will be easier to you. So now can you tell me what should be the uh, right answer? Saurus cranes, they are non-migratory. However, there are some species of cranes which are migratory. Saurus cranes, they are usually non-migratory. Okay. Uh, red vented bull, bull, they are definitely non-migratory. They are the residents of india okay jacobian kaku they are partially migratory they mostly uh move towards the northern india uh during their breeding time okay so they go as far as that they don't go uh, anywhere else but this bar headed goose no this uh particular bird it flies all across your himalayas and comes to this asian country here okay for the breeding purpose. Okay. They travel all the uh, way across your Himalayas. So they are like the renowned migratory birds that we have. All right. So are you finding it easy to study in this way with the pictures? What do you think? Are you finding it easy to study in this way? 
to get to the answer when you have a picture in your mind or in front of you yes or no let's see, give me some honest answer okay okay so far rahul has only given me the answer what about the others yeah right okay okay so the next question absolutely yes i do agree with that okay we don't get pick an exam but it's easy with it i'll get to that point anupam yes sunshine i will get to your point as well you same as anupam you are telling me okay first let us try this question let's see then i'll come to your point which one of the following terms is used for species that exploit the same resource in a similar manner is it called a guild is it called a taxonomic order is it called a community is it called an assemblage what is it called the same resource in a similar manner okay so i'm getting many options guild taxonomic order community assemblages all right the answer for this is option 1 that is your guild okay so what is a guild it is any group of species that exploit the same resource or that exploit different resource in related ways okay it's not necessary that the uh, species within a guild has to occupy the same or even the similar ecological niche not at all okay so it can be like uh, two different plants they are uh, attracting uh, the pollinators in the same manner that can be a guild okay or it can be like uh, two different birds eating from the same uh, fruit but at different times okay that can be a guild okay so that is a guild who are exploiting the same resource in a similar manner now what is a taxonomic order taxonomic order we all know about it okay the different hierarchy that we follow under taxonomic classification okay there we come across a taxonomic order so related species with the um, you know the same characteristics what about community <coughs> community is you know diff, uh, species of different uh, populations of different species residing together in the same area that is your community population of different species residing at the same area what about assemblage related species okay population of related species living at the same area that will be your assemblage okay so community is like different species population of different species so it can involve your animals birds plants all together that is your community an assemblage is related species living together okay so it's only guild that satisfies this de definition what is given to us species that exploit the same resource in the similar manner okay now let me get back to your questions okay i see question from this unit in every year but can't attend due to lack of knowledge is difficult to understand what type of species they focus on okay 
right so let me help you in this so as i told you when you're studying any topic like if i take the last question here this one this is talking about the migratory birds right so take a list of the migratory birds okay and just have a picture of each of these migratory birds with you now you don't have to study all the migratory birds it's not possible it's practically not possible to study the entire list if that entire list even comprises of 10 migratory birds just remembering all of them is not possible because you're just not remembering you're just not memorizing that 10 list okay that 10 names there are many other things that you are memorizing so your uh, brain has some capacity okay let let's get to the fact so what you do is just take a hand just take two or three the most commonest one the most popular one okay <clears throat> please excuse me like in this case you have the bar headed goose this is the most popular one okay so take that example take the example and keep a picture at the side all right when you're studying about say uh, any of the uh, phylum okay or say you're studying about bryophytes so, so we just did a topic of bryophyte the question from bryophyte so list down the characteristics, okay? If you get a diagram which is showing you all the characteristics, just keep that diagram at the side of the list. Fine. When you're getting to the different uh, families of this, okay? Then just have, take one example, one or two example, and just keep a picture of it. Just to understand the diagram of the plant body. To get an idea of it just the idea of it now what happens is <coughs> csr when it is giving you a question definitely it will not give you an, a picture of, of that okay but you have already learned it with the picture so the picture is there in your head so when you look at a question if that question you have already studied then automatically the pictures will be coming in your uh you know in your memory so from there you can easily find out the difference now a question has been raised that it's also difficult to understand what type of questions what type of species they ask definitely as i told you it's not easy to learn to memorize because unit 9 is all about memorizing but at least you can do the most commonest one the most repeated repetitive ones right I'll show you one question. I have it later on. Even if you know one answer, you will be able to solve that question. I'll show you. I'll show you that picture. There is a match and, uh, match the column uh, kind of question. Even if you know one, the rest of it will fit in. So you get such questions. Why leave it out? Okay. Now you must be asking that ma'am, First and foremost, there is no book. There is no single book to get all these informations together. Okay, no textbooks are present. Biotechnica book is definitely there, but not any textbook. So how will we get all these pictures? Right? What you can do is, during those times, when you don't feel like of studying, I'm sure, I'm sure there are those times when you just feel very tired or you feel saturated okay and you think of taking a break right there comes those days how many of you will agree with it how will you agree with it don't you get the don't you get those days when you just, you know, even if you're looking at the book, nothing goes inside your head. You're just sitting with the book. Exactly. Yeah. Only two people have agreed with me. What about others? Wow, that's great. If you don't face this thing. Okay, yeah, you do. So use that time. That is the time. If you sit with cell biology, say suppose... Okay, and you think that nothing is going inside my head. Okay, no point of sitting with the cell biology. Okay, because you're saturated for the time being. You're saturated. Your brain has got a capacity, 
right is saturated for the time being you shift to any other lighter topics ecology you take up then also if you see that no nothing is going inside my head this i'm just reading it that's it i i'm not re, i'm not being able to recollect or i'm not being able to analyze i'm just reading it okay there's no point of it you don't feel like of doing part a also okay what you do at that time is sit with this list okay and simply type the names in google that's it you get the pictures so what you are doing is at those at that time you are reading it okay you're reading that list so it's a kind of learning with that you are taking the picture and you are associating so that adds on to your learning so even though though you are not feeling of learning anything you don't feeling of studying anything okay even by just searching it searching that picture you are doing two things together you're learning it without even knowing that you're learning it and secondly you're having a you know a list in your hand use those types it will not be a waste even if you can make one list like that no say um uh, when you're doing your um rare uh, endangered animals okay endangered animals so make a list of it say five endangered animals okay just have a picture of it beside it enough and yes what you do is so today you have made the list okay next day again when you don't feel like of you know studying just take out that list and go through it at least you, you will not feel bored looking at pictures isn't it you might feel bored looking at the words and the sentences and those highlights and everything but what about pictures people don't get bored looking at pictures isn't it so just by looking at the picture you're revising try it out maybe you will not be able to do the entire thing within this time but at least you are utilizing those times which would have gone into waste and you will enjoy it as the, at the same moment you will learn it at the same moment you are already making a note at the same moment three things you are doing it at the same time okay try it and then give me a feedback as to how you feel or do you think it is worth it or not i'm i'll be waiting for a feedback okay so so we are launching a raftar batch okay so from 11 september you have this um, raftar batch which is a speed revision batch for csir net december exam which will give you the online study portal powerpoint presentation daily practice sheets uh 24 into 7 faculty support animatica zone okay where you have the animations aimnet test series and biotechnical revision tools okay with all topics covered so this is a very interesting batch that we are started you know study uh, starting with it uh you can spread this information to your friends whoever needs help please come to us we can help you out okay those who need help we are here to help you out okay so getting back to the question answer series coming to question number 6 <clears throat> the following terms represent different methods in phylogenetic tree construction option unweighted pair group method using arithmetic average minimum evolution method maximum parsimony method maximum likelihood method so you have to select the option that represent all the distance based method okay anupam you are asking can watson scholarship scholars get daily practice sheet anupam kindly mail it to cst okay they will be able to help you out on this uh, information
Okay, so let's see who gives me this answer. <clears throat> so this is a topic from the construction of your phylogenetic tree. Now, this is something that you have to study, okay? Just learning the, uh, you know, there is no picture of it as such, which will help you to recollect. This is again a part of your unit uh, nine. And yes, this is uh, in connection to your unit 11 also, where you study about the, uh, that molecular evolution. Okay, because ultimately when you study about the molecular evolution, the end part is that construction of the phylogenetic tree using the molecular data. Okay, so that is in connection with your unit nine where you uh, learn about what is a phylogenetic tree, what is a caladogram, okay, what is a, a rooted tree, what is an unrooted tree, and you learn how to create a phylogenetic tree, the calculations and stuff. So it is connected. So this is something that you have to study it yourself. I mean, you have to read it from the book. So, okay, again, I'm getting mixed answers as to three, four, two. Okay. Well, the correct answer for this is option one. See, distance based method. Okay. If I write it down, the distance based method. Methods, you know, this uses two sequences to construct the uh, tree. Okay, and the most popular ones uh, under this distance me uh, based method, it is your unweighted pair group method and the minimum evolution method. Okay. And the rest two that you have here, the maximum parsimony and the maximum likelihood, these are character based. These are character based. Character based methods. Okay, where they use all the uh, evolutionary information which is uh, available, okay? That is that uh, individual substitution among the sequences they use to determine the likelihood, okay? Or to determine the ancestral, ancestor, right? So the distance-based met uh, method are these two. So one representation I can show you of uh, this UPGMA, this is how it looks. Okay, this is a very familiar picture. You will uh, get to see in the books, isn't it? The classification of uh, bacteria, archae, and eukaryota. This is what is based on this uh, distance ma based method. Okay, the UPGMA method. All right. Now, moving over to question number seven. The flowers of which one of the following plant species is used by indigenous communities of central India to make an intoxicant of for consumption? This is again unit nine, Indian subcontinent. And under that uh, section, you will get this question. Okay, where you are studying about the Indian species, the different plant species, the important ones. So this is your mohua. This is your monkey puzzle tree. This is a rhododendron and this is your elephant grass.
So the correct answer for this is Mahua. Okay, so Mahua, this is actually um, this, are, this is used by the indigenous community of Central India to make the intoxicant for consumption. And uh, this tree is mainly uh, found in the central and western part of the country. Yes, you're right. Mahua. Absolutely. Okay. Now, if you consider this tree, this tree has uh, a lot of uh, values. Okay. It is used for various purposes like production of alcohols, beverages, Okay, all from the flower. And this is also known as your Mahua liquor, okay, which holds a very uh, cultural and traditional significance in many uh, indigenous communities. And even um, in some rituals, they, you, they have this Mahua, you know, the Mahua liquor. So this is important. Rhododendron also you make... Uh, lick uh, juice out of rhododendron but that is uh, not for intoxicant okay that is not an intoxicant so this is again a general question uh, no general answer kind of question you have okay now moving on to question number eight now this is what i was uh, mentioning if you know one option okay you will be able to answer the others as well Find out the link of others as well. So let's see who can get to the answer of this question. <clears throat> Please excuse me. So India has designated regions as sanctuaries or national parks dedicated for the conservation of specific uh, species. And they have given you the column P with the species and the column Q with the different sanctuaries. Now, like this question can come for your national park as well. It can come for your Ramsar site. It can come for um, the biosphere reserve. Okay. Any of the conservation sites. And this is a very common kind of question you get to match the column where they will give you the name and the example. Okay, so, so far you have given me the correct answer, everyone. So, is everyone trying out on this? So, the correct answer for this is option one. Okay, very good, everyone. So, see, in this case, if you just know that Bhitar Kanika Wildlife Sanctuary, which is in Orissa, that is famous for your crocodile. Okay, that is famous for your crocodile. If you just know one option, the rest of it will follow. Okay. Now you might be uh, thinking that how to memorize all of it. So here again, you can take a help of a picture. Okay. There are many sanctuaries, I understand many of it, but at least the important ones, okay? You just uh, get the name of the important ones. Keep the important animal beside it, okay? The example of important animal of that particular sanctuary or of that particular national park or uh, whatever, the biosphere reserve, okay? The important animal or the bird, just keep a name of that beside it. Okay, so you can uh, use a picture or you can use a table for uh, these kinds of questions, for memorizing these kinds of questions. Okay, moving on to question number nine. <clears throat> So this is again a question from your plant. So all the botany people, this will be easy for you to answer. It will be a bit difficult. I do agree that it will be a bit difficult for uh, people from the non-botany -bot background. So Amborelli C, 
Aristol uh, Aristolochiaceae, Liliaceae, Winteraceae are four angiosperm families that, according to APJ4 uh, system of classification, belong to the early diverging angiosperms. The presence of B plus or absence of B minus of vessels in the xylem and the fusion of the carpus within the gynecium are important angiosperm characters. A and S indicate apocarpus or monocarpillary uh, and syncarpus condition of ovary respectively. Which one of the following options correctly represents the characteristics found in the above family? So is there any botanist out there? Do I have any botanist in my session who would like to try this question? See, when you're studying about any classification, no, you first have to study about the morphology, actually. Whether it be the plant classification or animal classification, these terms, apocarpus, monocarpillary, uh, syncarpus, okay? Uh, these uh, words you need to understand first. What are these words? What does, what does it mean? Even sometimes, you know, uh, they might not ask you from this family, but they can ask you from the morphology part. Okay. So even if you don't study about the characteristics of the family and this diverging of the family and so on and so forth, this is a very detailed part. At least you can study the morphology. I'm talking about both animals and plants. Okay. Because a lot of questions comes from the morphology as well. So this is a picture of your Amborella, the only existing species of this family, Amborellaceae. This is your Arist uh, Aristolochia. Aristolochia. Okay. This is the picture of Lily. We all know Lily. And this is a picture of your Winteraceae family flower. Okay. So, anyone would like to try? No one? Okay. So, this is option one. Right? Now, you see. So far, we did a lot of questions. Okay, nine questions we have done. Of which, I will say that, yes, this question is difficult. Why it is difficult? Because, first and foremost, you have to know the latest classification system on top of that you have to learn about the different uh, vessels okay uh, the morphology what it is what does it mean why they are placed in the early uh, diverging angiosperms so there are a lot of this uh, you know information that you need to study so these kinds of question you know be very specific i will suggest like for those who are from the botany background, you can study these classification in such details. Okay, because you're already studying it in your master's, right? Those who are from the animal background study these kinds of questions from the animal point of view. If you get a common question, it's fine. If you don't get the common question, leave it out. There's no, uh, like, if you leave out one question, it's, it won't be a big uh, problem. All right. At least the others you are able to answer. So if there are four questions from your unit nine, say suppose, and one question is from your conservation, one question is from taxonomy, okay, one question is from say any kind of uh, morphology, and one question is in which is in such details. So if you can answer at least two questions also, then that also will fetch you marks. Okay, if you can answer three questions also, well, that will also fetch you marks. So for these kinds of things, be very specific. Okay, there's no point of wasting your time studying uh, for animal people. Those who have uh, studied about animal uh, thing, animal background, there's no point of, uh, you know, wasting your time studying the plant classification and all in such details. It's not required. Okay. So leave out these kinds of questions and be very specific when you're choosing the question. 
Got it? And now moving to question number 10. Now, see, this is again from plant. Members of the chlorophytes. Okay, that means this is your algae actually. This is the algae. But, but you can read this up. Uh, I mean, read these information. You can memorize these information. These are simple informations. Even if you're not from the botany background, still you can uh, remember these information. It's just talking about the different classes that you have with an example. Okay? This is easy. You can try it out. If you get time, try it out. Okay? But for the previous kind of question, you might leave it. So anyone would like to answer this? Okay, Sunshine has answered this. Fine, so okay, I'll give you the pictures. This is your chlorella, okay? This is your zygnema. This is your udogonium and this is your draparnialdia. Now can you tell me? What should be the order of complexity, structural complexity? The first picture is your chlorella. The second picture is your zygnema. The third here is udogonium. And this is your draparnaldia. Others, why don't you try? I've given you the picture now. By looking at the picture, it should be easy. Isn't it? Okay. Any other answers? Okay, so of course, the correct answer is option one. Okay, just look at the pictures. This is a unicellular, right? This is also unicellular, but uh, no, this is multicellular. Okay, here also you have more detailed structures. You have the ugonium. Okay, and this is like, uh, forming the plant body kind of. Okay, so option one is the correct answer. Okay. And the last question I have for today's session. So this is again based on your phylogenetic tree, but it might look very difficult, but the concept is very simple. Very simple concept. Don't go by how the you know question is looking. Just go by the concept of one thing, which is your parsimony. So they have given you what? In four taxa, A, B, C, and D, two characters, that is shape and color, was scored to infer their phylogenetic relationship. The two character states for shape were square and round, while the two character states for color were black and yellow. The character distribution is given in the table. So M means it is square in shape and black in color. N taxon is represented by a circle and yellow. O taxon is represented by a square and yellow. P taxon is represented by a circle and yellow.
So go by uh, principle of parsimony. What did I tell you about principle of parsimony? Principle of parsimony. Okay, option one, option four, fine. So basically the principle of parsimony, it says that the phylogenetic tree with the least number of evolutionary events, okay? That is the most probable one. So what you have to look is for the least number of evolutionary events now how will you find out uh, the least number of evolutionary events how many branches has been uh, has happened okay so if you see here the first option one you will see that this is the first node right so this is my ancestral from here there has been a divergence where i got uh, you know, the first character state changed from yellow, uh, from the black to yellow condition. And then the second characteristic change, that is from the uh, square to the circle. Okay. Now, if you look here, see over here, they are telling you that it was first a circle. Then the circle turned into a square. Then the square turned into black. And over here again, they turned into yellow, which is not right. Isn't it? The sequence is not right. Secondly, here, if you observe, in this case, they are saying that it is square. Then it turned into circle. Then again, it turned back to square. Right? So that means what the ancestor character is coming back, you're trying to say. Okay? So it is also not likely possible. But what else is possible that it was a square. Now it turned into a yellow square. Okay. And on the other hand, on the other route, you get the two yellow circles. Got it? So this can come with your uh, parsimony. So now if you consider which is in accordance to your parsimony, you will see that it is your option four. Okay, least number of events, less evolutionary changes, exactly, sunshine, less evolutionary changes. Okay, so this is all that I had to discuss. I had to show you and I had to guide you. So unit 9, instead of leaving out completely, do something out of unit 9. Okay? That I will suggest. Whichever is easy for you. So don't leave out this uh, phylogenetic tree. It is a very common question you get. Okay? Uh, to analyze a phylogenetic tree or this principle of parsimony, rooted, unrooted tree. This is a very common topic. So just read that part. And the others, okay? morphology that you have or those list of uh, rare and dangerous things. Make a list of it. Okay, try it out. Don't leave out completely. So use those times when you don't feel like of doing anything and use it fruitfully. Okay? Any questions you would like to ask me? Any more suggestions regarding unit 9?
So how did you find the session? Is it helpful to you? Can you see some hope regarding unit 9? Will you try out, uh, you know, doing using these techniques? Okay. All right. So, any other way I can help you with unit 9? So, if you just practice questions you know, from unit 9, uh, you will get an idea as to what kind of questions are being asked from them. Okay, so at least just prepare those kinds of questions. You will not get the exact one, okay, but the pattern will be almost the same. And use these techniques, okay. It has helped me when I was preparing uh, for CSIR during my time. Uh, this technique helped me. Okay, so this is what I'm sharing it with you also. I hope this will help you to at least out of five questions, try to attempt at least two or three. Okay, you will be if you if you practice, uh, if you get the pattern of the questions, no. And if you practice in this way, you will be able to try out some questions. You will not have to leave out unit night completely. Okay. So with this, I will end my class today. Okay. Thank you everyone for attending. And uh, if you need any suggestions, you can definitely, for those who are with Biotechnica, you can reach me out. Okay. Uh, if you need any other uh, suggestions uh, we need few more question discussion for this unit okay so you want some more question discussions from this unit okay fine then uh, i can allot one more day also for unit nine we can practice some more questions from unit nine if you want that so is it like for others as well What do you think? Can you give me some feedbacks? OK. So Anusha, Anupam, Rahul, you're saying that, OK. So you agree on one more session. So fine. Um, next week, then again, I have a class with you, right? I have a session with you. So uh, we'll take up again Unit 9 over there. In the meantime, if you get time, you can, you know, try this technique. Okay. So next week, again, I'll come up with some more questions of unit 9. So till then, bye-bye. Take care. And keep studying. And also enjoying. Okay. Enjoying and studying is very, very important. Otherwise, it's not... It will not be helpful. So enjoy what you're doing. So bye-bye and good night.